Now, Oliver Behrman's amazing debut in Ferrari and Jeddah has opened up a very old question in the world of Formula 1. Why aren't we seeing a lot more younger drivers, instead of having drivers who are well past their prime and are getting outperformed by the rest of the youngsters on the grid in a regular manner? And now that Behrman has expressed his commitment to signing a contract with Haas, if the American team would be open to having these contractual talks with him, are we going to witness a change in the culture in Formula 1? And more importantly, will it be for the betterment of the sport? Formula 1 is all about improvement. And although we don't get many of the young bucks to compete in the most elite championship, that doesn't mean that we're not one step away from having the next Verstappen or Hamilton on the grid, which was definitely proven by Oliver Behrman's debut with Ferrari, one that came with one hour of preparation in FP3 and a very solid result of P11 in qualifying as well as P7 in the race, holding both Norris and Hamilton on the way of doing so. However, the Brit is more than aware that there is nothing much he could do at this point to enter the sport because there is only a place for 20 drivers on the grid, and no matter how good or young you are, there are always other factors in place. For example, how much value financial-wise a certain driver can bring to the team. When talking about his future in F1, something that while being more than certain now that Behrman is likely to enter the same category as the waiting drivers like the last F2 world champions, Felipe Drogovic and Federic Vesti, Behrman went on to add, I don't know what else I can do. I don't think I'll be in F1 for the rest of the year. So my goal was to do a great showing this weekend and I think I did a decent job. That's all I can do. I keep pushing and crossing my fingers. I have a lot of free practice sessions with Haas this year, so I'm looking forward to building up a relationship with them and gaining more miles in the car. Hopefully a door can open, that would be fantastic. With Carlos seemingly recovering well and likely to be ready for Australia, Behrman won't get an opportunity for a second race to prove that what he showed in Saudi Arabia wasn't just a one-time show, unlike Lawson, who while having five races under his belt as the replacement of Ricardo and being the highest ranking Alpha Tauri driver in 2023 at a certain time with his P9 finish in Singapore, is still without a proper F1 seat. There are always promises and there are always free practice sessions that are giving these young drivers a lot to hope for. But quite frankly, none of them is the real deal and there is a small amount of them who can actually make it into Formula 1 based on pure talent and not on money, with Oscar Piastri and Mick Schumacher being a few of the drivers that managed to do this by filling the former criteria. And whether we like it or not, the truth needs to be said. Drivers like Ricardo, Bottas and Magnussen, although still running very solidly at their respective ages, just don't seem to have the passion in themselves to continue racing in the sport. And if you are to delve deeper into their careers, you'd understand as to why they've lost the passion for the sport. Bottas went from standing on the podium consistently to literally finishing dead last. Ricardo's future is known to everyone out there, as he could potentially move to Red Bull if he shows some great results this year in the racing ball. And considering the position Haas has been in the last couple of seasons, you can kind of understand the disappointment of Magnussen right now when he returns to the sport and is stuck at the back of the grid. And the policy of Haas definitely doesn't help the younger drivers who are eager to make it into Formula 1. After trying out two very young drivers in Mick and Mazepin, the American squad decided they don't want to deal with rookies anymore and all they want to do is have experienced drivers in their lineup. I'm not saying that this is essentially wrong. Hulkenberg went on to score a point for Haas in Jeddah, thanks to a brilliant tactic that involved Magnussen as well. But all I'm saying is that this is preventing a lot of young talent from looking for a drive elsewhere, because there's only so much space for F1 drivers. To add salt to the wound, there are drivers on the grid who are not just fitted for their job, but are doing it because of the most important factor, money. Lance Stroll will always come to mind when this topic is brought up, and the fact that his father owns the team further kills any opportunity for a young driver, such as Felipe Drogovic, who's an F2 champion, to have a proper go with the Silverstone-based squad, even though the Brazilian signed a contract as the reserve driver for the team. Be that as it may, the case of Logan Sargent may lead you to believe that there is a future in Formula 1 if you're good enough in F2. But quite frankly, money plays a massive role in why Logan is racing in the sport in the first place. Although nobody expected from him to be better than Albon, who had raced alongside Verstappen in Red Bull and has almost single-handedly carried Williams to P7 last year, the expectations were not to be as slow and uncompetitive as he was in his first year. 
But then again, Sargent's career in his early ranks before F1 was funded by Williams, and he was driving their academy as well. So it would make a lot of sense for them to go with this pick, even though it might not make a lot of sense in terms of scoring good results. Be that as it may, the situation is quite obvious. There are lots of drivers on the grid that don't deserve to be there, and they're stealing the spotlight from the young stars who are waiting to shine and to show the world that there is somebody else apart from the current 20 drivers who could become the next big thing in the sport. All of this prevents drivers who had more than one race to prove themselves in the sport from joining an F1 team on a full-time basis. But then again, the case of Nick De Vries goes to speak against the favour of the young drivers. Even though De Vries' age was nowhere near close to what Behrman and the rest of the F2 champions have on their side. After just 10 races with Alpha Tauri, De Vries failed to impress the toxic environment in Red Bull. And while many praise Ricardo as the right man to lead the team in the right direction, we have seen right now that maybe the Aussie is a bit overhyped. And there is a lot of old fame on which he's riding in order to secure his F1 seat in the foreseeable future. After all, the marketing value that Ricardo brings to a team is not something to be messed around with. And that's the same with Bottas, because being on a team that used to dominate the sport is definitely something that helps your case as a high-valued member of the sport, and therefore your marketing abilities rise through the roof. What this essentially proves is that the sport might not always be about racing and discovering new talents through the rising ranks of F3 and F2, but keep the drivers who would bring a lot of money thanks to their popularity gained both on the track and from their appearance on the reality show Drive to Survive. Yes, it's quite unrealistic for us to call for Hamilton or Alonso to retire as two of the oldest drivers on the grid because apart from their championship winning seasons, they're also driving at the top of their game. Given the current machinery they have and the experience they provide to their respective teams, this is not something you could compare with anything that a young driver can provide out there. Yet, when it came to replacing Hamilton, Wolf said maybe the time for bold moves has come for Mercedes, and if they want to have the next Verstappen in their team, they should sign him at a proper time. In this case, talking about Andrea Kimi Antonelli, who skipped F3 and went on to race directly in F2 with one of the most competitive teams in this championship, Prema Racing. Although it's still uncertain whether Kimi would inherit the seat of Hamilton, it's quite obvious that Mercedes has understood the magnitude of the situation they're dealing with. Because if you are to look at Verstappen's career, he started in F1 before he even got his driver's license outside of the sport. Bold moves do bring bold solutions to some painful questions. And in this case, one couldn't help but wonder, should the older drivers be replaced? and stop blocking the way of the young prospective talent, and more importantly, which team do you think will present the next young superstar in the sport? Let us know in the comments down below.